Have you ever thought about making your own podcast, but you're just not sure how to get started? Carolina and Nicole use Anchor. It's easy to use, convenient, and it's free. Anchor will distribute and monetize your podcast. It offers everything you need. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hi, this is Carolina. This is Nicole. Join the conversation as we discuss life, love, health, and all the cheese in between. Welcome back. Welcome to Different Accents. Uh, this month well, we're celebrating Music de Mayo with a special guest who will be sharing how music has influenced them and how they have inspired other one way or another. We had um, our musical uh, guest uh, last about um, one of my favorite genres of music, which was freestyle, um, that had a big influence on me. Uh, how did music influence you? Like, what was your favorite type of music? For me, uh, I grew up with more like pop, Spanish pop, right? Like Shakira, oh, Alejandro yeah. Sanz, Laura Pausini, Ove Siete, and also some Tejanas, you know, Norteña, Selena, right, of course. Yeah. And Madonna, believe it or not, because I was like, okay. also really big back then, Vogue. I yeah, like you got to get up for Madonna. <laughs> 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 you always yeah. like a virgin who could go. Like, yes. You know what? I saw, I saw that video of you out in Mexico. So were you making a comeback oh. or what was going on with that? Oh, Shakira. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what happens in Mexico stays in Mexico. And I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was singing some Shakira. I know, right? I mean, that's how music is for me. It's music it is therapy, right? So I'm mm-hmm. uh, doing my uh, car karaoke when I'm alone in the car, right? <clears throat> and um, favorite songs that I do uh, tend to always go back to and sing is from one of my f- uh, favorite female group, uh, Girls, who's uh, one of the originators of freestyle um, music, which ironically has had a big influence on today. See, so we're very excited about tonight's Music the Mayo guest. He has definitely created a soundtrack of his own. He has been part of uh, the freestyle music scene for well over 25 years. He's a writer, a producer, a manager, an agent, a legend, right? Yes, I don't know. So welcome to Different Accents. Latif, Latif welcome. Hey, hey, what's, what's up, ladies? Thank you How for you being doing? a guest. <laughs> yes. Hey, first of all, I, 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 want, I want to say, listen, I love what you guys are doing. I love this podcast. <laughs> Thank I really you. do. Thank you. <laughs> I, lo- I love the, the vibe. I can feel the vibe between you. I love working with people. So uh-huh. when, when, you get that, when you get that synergy, when you get that, that connection, it, it, it flows. <laughs> I, I can hear it between the two of you. And I think you know, this podcast is really going to go somewhere keep 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 it up man thank keep you I'm oh, blushing real. over thank here <laughs> yes absolutely the pressure the pre- mm. no no pressure no yeah yeah no hey, you're doing you're doing good you're doing good oh thank you, thank I, love you. I love it um, i love it Tief, I've, I've been following you and i feel like i know you in some way right <laughs> <laughs> Probably, um, yeah. yeah yeah you know so I think it's fair to say that you've done a little bit of everything during your career. Um, yes. Could you share more about yourself, where you grew up, and how you did business? Um, sure, sure. Well, I was born and raised in the Bronx, New York, okay, raised mm-hmm. by a single mother. I was always inspired. I, I actually wanted to be a singer when I was, when I was a kid for as, as far back as I can remember. I'm talking about five, six years old. I was a huge fan of the Jackson Five, I was a huge oh, fan yeah. of the uh, of the Osmond Brothers. But you see, that was the issue. Yeah. That was the problem there. You know, I, we had the Jacksons and we had the Osmonds, but I was a Puerto Rican kid from from <laughs> basically from the ghetto, from the hood. There was okay. nobody rep. There was nobody representing me. There was nobody That's that true. I that I could look to. You know, so of course I grew up with those two influences. You know, and then you know, and as I got older. I started doing a lot of writing. I was always writing, writing poems. I was writing mm. songs. And then when the rap craze came in, I started, I started writing raps and I started rapping because that was my thing, you know. And by that time, I had already moved to Queens. I had, you know, I, we lived in Jackson Heights. Me and my mother, it's just oh. her and I, we moved there. And um, I ended up when I was, uh, 
um, a teenager, well, I was about 17, yeah, about 17 years old. I ended up um, getting a job in Manhattan and um, I worked at a, at a building. I was working maintenance. Mm -hmm. And I, at that time, that was a good job for someone my age who lived with, with their mother. Like I used to take all my money and buy studio equipment. And like nobody had studio equipment at that time, but I was making so much money and I had like no bills. I used to give my mom like a hundred dollars a paycheck and the other oh, yeah, went, in, went in my pocket, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the hundred dollars. That was a life. <laughs> yeah, they all went a hundred dollars. So I used to give her that and then the rest was mine. And um, it's about these, I had this drum machine and I used to drive the freight elevator in this building. And I used to pop on the headphones and I used to create beats and the building oh. is on 520 Madison Avenue. It was 43 stories. And every time people used to come in, but it was a freight elevator. So it was really only the workers. We didn't have like regular people in there. Right. So it was always the engineers or other porters or the building managers. And people used to always be like, you know, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm, I'm creating beats. I'm like, they've never seen this machine before. So I used to put my headphones on them because I could plug it in. I was able to sit in the corner press the button for the elevator and just, you know, plug it in. I'm, and I'm driving the elevator with one button and doing these beats. And I used to let every <laughs> he kept telling me, they were like, they were like, man, you got to meet, I, you know, you got to meet Tony. We got to meet Tony. I'm like, who's Tony? I said, his, his daughter's a singer. So I'm like, oh, okay. All right, cool. So, you know, a few weeks went by. Everybody's still talking. I still haven't met this Tony guy. He's one of the engineers. I'm thinking Tony's an older guy. Like most of the people there were old, short, fat, bald headed dudes. So <laughs> I figure his daughter's maybe older than me at that point, you know? So, you know, finally I'm in the loading dock one time and this guy comes up to me, young Italian guy. He's like, hey man, you're the one that does the beats, man, the elevator, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, yeah, he goes, I heard about you. He goes, can I hear what you got? And I had my little Walkman. I had just bought one of them brand new <laughs> Sony, <laughs> Sony Walkmans. I remember I, those? Yeah, I had the one that you, you could pop out the, the you could pop out the um the, the radio thing, the little mm -hmm. cassette that would transfer as a radio. So I let him listen to it. He was listening, he was listening to all the raps that I was doing, you know. So he was listening to all these raps and then and he disappeared. He says, Can I hold this for me? I said, Yeah, sure. I thought he was just going to go like on in the corner. The doctor dude like disappeared all day. I was, what? I was pissed off at this time. Like I didn't trust him. I'm like, yo man, this dude took my walk, man. I don't have my walk. Like I was upset. Finally, I run into him and he, and he goes, oh, so he gives it back. I said, okay. So I, I take it back. He goes, it was really good. He goes, can I show you? So he brings me to his locker room, which was across from where our locker room was. And he opens up his locker and he shows me all these newspaper articles of this little girl, his daughter, who's performing. It was little Susie. Oh. And she was she wasn't even she wasn't even five years old yet. In fact, oh. her birthday was her birthday was happening. And he invited me to Studio 54 to come see to her birthday party, you know, Studio and that was the first house. Oh. Yeah, her, her, her fifth birthday was hosted by by the village people in, in Studio 54. <laughs> wow. And that was the first time I went there. And that's the first time I got to see it. and that pretty much how I basically branched. That was, you know, mm. how I got into that whole area. It was just, it was just weird. Like I didn't find freestyle. It was, and there was no freestyle at that point. That's not what we called it. <laughs> and really, I didn't know any of these other acts. By that time, I didn't know who the cover girls were. I didn't know TK. I didn't know any of it. All I knew was Little Susie. And then later on, Lisa Lisa came out. So what year was this when you met, when you, dis well, when you discovered who Little Susie was? Um, wow. I don't know, 80, 80, let me see, okay. All right, this is how, this is how I figure it out. I went to prison in 1986. <laughs> so, so we're going to talk, so talk about maybe 19, this has to be like 1984. Oh, okay. Right, okay. so nice. this was before she put any records out. She was a, a novelty ax. Yeah. So she didn't have records out yet. She was just this, this little girl that used to sing covers. She used to do Lisa Lisa, Madonna, Cindy Lauper, Whitney Got Houston, oh, but she was a wow. phenomenal. Like they had her on all the papers, and she used to go. I mean, we used to do the Red Parrot Studio, oh, wow. the Palladium. Like she performed with no records at all these places. Yeah, you know. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So so <laughs> yeah. So and and yeah. So um. But you know. So that's that's what happened. That's so that's about the years. About I'll say about eighty four. So because she didn't get her first deal till basically till I was out. So it was about. I don't know, 80, 89, mm, I think mm -hmm. 89, she signed to High Power, and by 90, uh, Take Me in Your Arms kicked, and that took off, wow. you know? 
Yeah. So that yeah, that was that was the branch into and there was a lot of stuff that went on in between all of that, but that's a whole other podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so, part two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, part but two. It, it's it's yeah, it's a it definitely it's an interesting transition because it wasn't something I was after. You know, I wasn't looking. I wanted to be a rapper. And I used to open up for her at those places, by the way. Except for oh, studio, okay. all the other places. Yeah, I used to rap and I used to open up and I had an opening rap for her that I used to do. And I've done I, I've done so many shows with her. And that's how that whole thing branched off. You know? Oh, okay. Nice. So then you're yeah. so you would you started rap. So I mean, <laughs> was it just you? Did you have a a stage name or was it yeah i used to go by i used to go by shock mc and i had a partner for a minute i had a partner for a minute and um but him and i won we ended up not doing he was really i was doing everything i was writing all the music yeah yeah. i was writing all the lyrics i was i was doing everything he just was tagging along because i didn't want to do it by myself i ended up doing a lot basically alone you know and uh and then i wrote her first song her first original which was called get up and she okay. used to perform that song. So like anyone who's an old school little Susie fan, because I get mm-hmm. people that come up, they say, yo, I remember when she used to do Get Up and she used to wear the shirt and then say Get Up on it. I say, yeah. <laughs> I say, yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, and it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a cool experience. But, you know, got to realize it was a real bad time for me to come up in that in the music area mm-hmm. in the music business during that time and i was in jackson heights which was the co- cocaine capital of new york at that time oh no yeah so yeah, yeah so yeah, things got body. really yeah i don't know how raw you guys go with your podcast i, I could no I could that, no you <laughs> no you can't I mean, yeah yeah we're, we're trying to keep it real but yeah I remember okay yeah, oh yeah I can't. being in you know i remember the 80s so you know i mean i was yeah. an 80s child and that whole that yeah. whole thing broke out and it was just, yeah. it was crazy. Yeah, I got, was... caught, I got caught, I got caught up in it and, and yeah. it was, uh, and it was crazy because it was during a real important time in my career. Like that one thing that I was dreaming about my whole life. Yeah. I finally got that opportunity. And that's when it's on, kicking off. Some of the... Freestyle started. Yeah. Every, and then, mm-hmm. right. And then they swiped me up. And what was so crazy is like, I used to hang out with Sapphire's uncle. His name was Carlos. Okay. okay? And he used to always tell me about his niece who was going to be a singer. And I used to tell him about little Susie. Yeah. But we, we never put them together. We didn't realize that so many <laughs> years later, they'll be a part of the same genre. I didn't right. see Sapphire until I watched her video while I was in the day room in, in prison. In prison, wow. Yeah, and it was so You're like, because I'm watching. What is going on? Yeah, because I'm looking at the TV and I see her video, and I'm telling people, I'm like, yo, and I'm trying to tell them this story, and they're like, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever. You know, yeah, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, so it was, uh, it was, it was a really, it was a really dramatic time because my career was was now. Uh, taking a a serious hit and now I'm watching all my peers and I'm watching all these people that I should be a part of I'm watching them all flourish and I'm stuck I I still got two and a half more years to do and I'm like and that's why if you guys ever see my my, I have a book called Freestyle for Life my first book yeah yeah it's it's based on that because it's about a guy who was at the top of the world and he winds up getting locked up and then he sees his career basically blossom on TV and yeah. then when he comes out, he tries to rejuvenate that market. And people are like, nah, man, it's dead. It's all about hip hop. And that's exactly what was happening what with happened? me when I came out. I was like, yeah. I was like, okay, cool. I'm out. Let's get this shit going again. Let's get it going again. And people are like, nah, man, that's not really happening. Yeah, we're it's listening to hip hop. By hip hop. We're the tribe now. Yeah. We ain't and, free Yeah, R and B, you know, yeah. 90s R and B, which I was a fan of. That was my right. thing. I love R and B. I love hip hop. But the freestyle now. Was my in? It was my door. I didn't have yeah. a hip hop door or RB door, so I'm like, damn, you know. So, oh, so you man. mentioned your first book was titled "Freestyle for Life," right? Y- yes, I did that in 2010. I believe. So, how did you get into the writing business? Oh, that's funny because, <laughs> all right, I, I I've always written stuff. I've always I've always written. I've always wrote songs. I've written poems. I've written short. Like I used to love to write scripts. I wrote plays. I wrote all these different. Oh, I just wow. love to write. Even now, I blog a lot. I'm on Quora. I write a lot. I love. Even if you look at my posts on, on Facebook, you know, I don't just do a normal post. I usually tell a story. That's yeah. just me. Yeah. That's what I like to nice. do. And that really, 
the, the, where that came from, really, honestly, is I used to lie a lot as a kid. I swear <laughs> to God. I, I, used to, I, used to, I used to lie a lot. And I used to tell these crazy ass stories. Like, I listen to these stories now, and I'm like, how do people ever even believe me? Like, did people really believe me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, you know, I, I, here's, this, here's this kid who just lived with his mother. I lived in a neighborhood that there was a lot of, you know, in Queens, there was a lot of, mm-hmm. you know, two parent homes. And every some of these people went on vacations and they went to Colombia and they went oh. to Peru and they went to all their countries, you know, so they came back. I, my mom took me to Disney World. But I had to kind of like, you know, I had to kind of hype it up a little bit more. So, right, you, know, right. so I used to, yeah. you know, I used to tell those stories. But what, what happened was Angel, me and Angel was sitting down one time and she used to tell me these stories about where she used to, she used to live in this building on Ho Avenue. It's called Ho Avenue in the Bronx. When her and I, when I first started working with her, I was booking her. I remember I had to send her a check. I said, what's your address? She gave me the address. And she said, she said, Ho Avenue. I'm like, Ho Avenue? <laughs> she started laughing. She goes, yeah, that's really my... I said, oh, my God. I said, oh, okay. I'm not going to ask any more questions, but okay. <laughs> and um, um, so, but she used to tell me all this crazy stuff that used to go on in that building. So I told her, man, I said, you should write a story. You should write a book. So I went and I went online and I bought her this book called, you know, How to Write a, a Novel. Just not too big. It was like maybe a couple hundred pages. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, why don't you take this book? Why don't you? That's me. See, I geek out on stuff. I want to learn something. Okay. I buy every book. Like I got thousands of books in my house. <laughs> I buy every book. I study it. I watch videos. I read about. It. I just geek out. I just go. I I obsessed over it. It's a little crazy. That's um, awesome. So not everybody's the same way. So I bought her this book, and she reads a lot. But I I know I put the book down. She said, "Okay, I'm reading this." When I get to her, so every time, every day, I notice a book stayed on her dresser. She never got to it yet. So one day, I laid on the bed. I was just I just grabbed the book. I said I saw I saw kind of like flipping through the pages, and I started reading. It. And I actually knocked out that book that night. I finished the whole book, and it inspired me. And right away, Ooh. I had this idea that was sitting in my head for a long time. And that next morning, I sat down, and I started writing the first pages of Freestyle for Life. Oh, wow. And that book took me, that book took me almost two years to write. Nice. It was one hell of a task. I know? bet. Yeah. Yeah. Did, but once it, I, your once creativity. I did it, yeah. Well, what's, <laughs> what it is, is, you know, beyond creati- creativity, because I think everybody, we all have some sort of level of creativity, you know, we all, you guys do, you guys have it, you can see, but because you're creating stuff now, you know, nobody told you what to do. You're coming up with your own ideas. And so we all have that. But what the key is with writing is the discipline. Yeah. The discipline right. to be able to get up every day and know you're gonna you gotta knock out X amount of pages. Yeah, it's like that commitment that, to it. That's what's hard. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. also to also be organized because you don't realize that when you're halfway through, you start shit starts to mess up. You start changing people's name. <laughs> One minute John was <laughs> was a blonde haired dude. Now yeah. his name is Jim and he's got red hair. It's like, and you go back to do a rewrite, like, what the hell? Like, who's these people? Who are these people? Yeah, and you literally get lost. It's almost like walking through the woods. You know, you like, yeah. you forget, you lose, your, you lose your way. So, you know, so you have to create your own. There's no, no one, there's a lot of books that will teach you how, you know, different ideas on how to structure that. But you really got to come up with your own idea on how to set that. So that way you could go in there and, you know, you could take it. And ever since then, you know, I've, I've got, I'm on my seventh book right now. Yeah. So I got it. I, I got it down pat, you know, so it still isn't easy. It's still a hell of a job, but I'm glad I broke that because I love, I love writing. I love writing. Oh, hey, I got to that this, If that's the only final. thing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> what? You, I'm like, well, I'll you get to your book. book. Yeah, yeah. But I just don't have time to read it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but that's fine. I tell people all the time. I said, throw a bookmark in there. Read two pages a month if you have to. Just yeah, you know, yeah. that's the beauty of books. You know, really, you don't. Know, people think you have to sit there and read through. I don't. I don't do that. Well, I don't have true. time either. You yeah. know. So, so now you're now you're then you're feeling right. like all great, like everything is just done with. You get out, but you were in there for three years. You said. Yeah, I did two and a half, and then I got hit at the board with six months. Uh-huh. And that was my second bid. The first year I did, a, I did before that, I did six months in 1986. Oh. And when I came out, I was only out for a short period of time. I was on Rikers Island there. And then when I came mm. back out in 1987, it really, it took like no time. Like I was back in. And now oh, wow. this time I had a felony. I already had a felony. So, yeah, so they were, they, and I could have got out earlier. I thought I was being cool. Everybody was saying, yeah, just hold out. They'll can, they'll can it. Man, they didn't can yeah. it. They started picking jury. 
Oh and I looked at my goodness. yeah, I looked at I looked at my attorney. I said, "Hey, because they offered me a one a one a one to a one to six a one to five, one and a half Hold to on. five. And um, I told her I told and I would have been like time served, but I would have had that on my record. And um, finally, I looked at my my attorney. I said, "Listen, I'll take that that plea." But we had already started picking jury. And when he contacted, when he talked to the the judge at that point, the judge was like, "Well, you know, he had us wait this long." He goes, yeah, we'll give him a plea, but he's got to do a two and a half to five. We're going to throw away the one, one, one and a half to five. Oh. And I was already laid up for about eight months. So I still had time to do. Yeah, it was, it was, oh. yeah, it was, it was, but it, but it, but it served its purpose. Like right. people say, well, do you glorify? Like sometimes you talk about, I say, no, I don't talk about it to glorify it. I talk about it because it, it built character. That's There's right. There's a lot of things that I, that I picked up that I would not have, have been the way I am yeah. now with my kids, so, my wife, my grandchildren. Right, right. It's part you of know. you. So you get out and to the music business. Um, so when I got out, you know, I had to, of course, go get a regular job, something right. that, like, you might as well hang me, you know? <laughs> and But I, that was part of my, you know, my me on parole. I had to go and get. And then my nephew had hooked me up to, um, to, to work in a chimney company. And he used to go up and clean chimneys and then sell caps. And what was crazy is that that was in Long Island. I used to have to take a train out there. And what happened was in a short period of time, instead of working for this company, I decided to start my own. So this is how I am. Yeah, so there you working go. Yeah. with that company for, for about three months, I saw what they were doing. I saw the money they were pulling. I was like, I don't need to make this trip two and a half hours. I could do this. I could do this myself. And okay. I remember my mother let my mother gave me two hundred dollars because I found a van, a yellow van with no seatbelts <laughs> and no gas, no gas gauge. And I bought this van for for two hundred dollars. And I used to rent a, a ladder. And I used to go door to door and sell chimney services. And I used to hire other inmates that used to come out of prison. My friends. There you go. So nice. they said, yeah. So they used wow. to come out of prison, even though a lot of them were scared to get on the roofs. That was a that was a whole, <laughs> you know. I was like, yeah. So what do I gotta do? Well, you gotta get up there. You're gonna take these poles. You're gonna get up on that up there. What do you mean up there? Yeah, right there. See that chimney? That's where you're gonna go up there. You're gonna push these poles down. And then, oh man, I, what if I fall? I said, well, you fall. You fall. What? Are you, I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> it depends on how you fall. You're you're like, get the up. sign of the cross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, but then um, but then I got a call from um Susie's father, and he always stayed in touch with me, and I was um, a little embarrassed because you know I was I was working with him and his daughter, who's a little girl, mm -hmm. and his wife, and here I was, I, I seriously screwed up. I mean, they opened up these doors, and I just basically, I screwed it up, and he calls mm -hmm. me up, but I never, we never had an issue. Like he always felt bad, and he used to talk to my mother when I was away, and um. And he always loved my writing. And he wanted to use some of my songs when I was locked up. And my mother said, no, you're going to have to wait till he comes out. I don't want to go through his stuff. So when I came home, uh, Tony calls me up one time. He says, hey, man, I want you to come to Brooklyn to the studio. I forgot the name of the, the studio. He goes, we're, gonna re we're recording your song, Children of the World. So oh. Children was of the Raw. So if you ever buy Lil Susie's first mm, album. First album. Uh, love the first album called uh, Love Can't Wait. That's what Take Me In Your Arms is. So yeah, there's yeah, a song, song number... Yeah, song number one, Children of the World, was a song that I wrote and produced. So, so he calls me in. He says, uh, but now they were doing better production of it. So he called me in to be a part of the production. And so I, I came in and, um, and, that's the first, and I saw her. And that's when we all kind of reunited once mm -hmm. again. Um, and, then, uh, and then later on, when Take Me In Your Arms blew up, yeah. she started going on the road with some other people. But then, <clears throat> excuse me, it got to a point where she couldn't. They couldn't rely on anyone. Oh. So they, um, they asked me if I wanted to go on the road. So I, I started going on the road with her as a road manager. You know? Nice. So, <clears throat> okay. But, um, yeah, so, so I started going on the road um, with her. Um, and we went out, for, and it would be either me, her, and her father, or me, her, and her mom. Mm -hmm. And we did that for years. We did that for years. We went all over the country. I mean, everywhere you can think of, Canada, Mexico, and we That's just crazy. We we yeah, we toured everywhere. Um, and then when she hit um 17, um, no, actually before that, um, her father, because we found that one of the agents we were working with was stealing. Oh, great. Wait, it wasn't stealing. Let me not say that I was wrong. What he was doing is he was taking 
her shows that people were calling for her, he was sending them to other sh- artists. Oh, and I overheard wow. him. I was, yeah, I was in the lobby of the, of, of the office building and I heard him taking one of her shows and reverting it. And I stood in front of his doorway and all of a sudden he says, oh, wow, well, look who's here. Latif's here, by the, by the way. <laughs> hey, we were just talking about you. So I knew it. So of course I went back and snitched. I went back yeah. to Tony. I said, hey man, I said, I said, they're doing wrong. He goes, really? He goes, I always thought that. He goes, I was wondering why we started to slow down. I said, yeah. I, he goes, he goes, why don't you, man? He goes, you know all these promos. Why don't you just do the shows and you you take the commission? I said, bing, freaking light bulb went off. I said, <laughs> right, like- I said, okay. And that's what I did. And she was so popular that it was an easy job. And then the money was easy. I was like, wow. I said, wow, I'm making, I'm making pretty good money <laughs> doing this, you know? And yeah. I started adding, I started adding of the art because people, promoters after we book, they said, who else do you know? I'm like, I know everybody. Who do you want? You get Stevie B? Absolutely. Lisa? Yep. Coral? Absolutely. TK? Yep. Uh, and I started, and I started booking everybody. And that's how I, and that was like in 95. That's how I established myself as a booking agent. Wow. And I started. Very and good. then when she turned, when she turned like 17, I think, or 17, her father called me. I remember because I thought I was getting fired or something. I was like, what the hell did I do? They called me into the house and sit down. We want to talk to you. I'm like, the mother's there. Suzanne's there. So mm-hmm. I'm, I sit down. I'm like, oh, shit, what did I do? Like, I don't do anything. I, I, I was always good when she's done with her show. I go back to the hotel. I don't mess. I never mess with girls on the road. Right, I don't right. get high. I didn't do <laughs> drugs. I didn't drink. Nothing. I didn't do anything. Never messed with money. And he goes, listen, he goes, um, you know, we have our son. We have to... We got, pay more attention to him and we really can't make those runs anymore we'd like you to take over and just handle Suzanne from this point on wow she's little, I turned me and her like best Trusted friend like, that's my that's like yeah. my best friend like she's like you know we're very very close so I turned I looked at her and she smiled like shaking her head like yeah like yeah she, 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 yeah she didn't want the parents on the road anymore so she's, like, <laughs> yeah. she's like yes perfect timing <laughs> yeah so yeah, and that's how that whole that whole that's how that transcended into that area, you know. Oh yeah, I got, yeah. I, got you know, nice I would, yeah, I would go to you know always been you know, go to the like dance halls and then uh, all the freestyle concerts they had here. I remember what well, was a long time ago, of course, but um, being there a couple of shows and got to see Lil Susie there. So uh, yeah, she was she, she was yeah, a she was there. I, she was there. I was there. Oh, she that's was, that's yeah. Yeah, I was. That's I'm, awesome. I, I, see, yeah. I didn't. I didn't get to experience that, but just hearing your story, I mean, it, the first thing I think about is like, wow, it's like family, friendship, loyalty. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's more just than the music. It's like a yeah. really nice bond, right? Yeah, we're, we're together now, me and Suzanne, like, I would say 35 years. Nice. Mm. And do you know, we've never even had an argument ever. Oh, that's amazing. That's a great relationship. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, I understood her. And the thing is, that even though she's younger than me, right? So mm-hmm. she's 42, I'm 54. And she, um, I remember when that time came where, you know, boys came into the picture and her father was like, hey, um, you know, she's at that. I'm like, listen, B, I said, he's my best friend, you know? And I was like, mm-hmm. I said, this is the deal with, with Suzanne. I said, you have to trust me. If I see something that I don't feel is right, I said, I'm going to step forward. Now, if I find that it's something that you need to know, I'm going to let you know. I said, but if I go back and report every little thing she does, I said, she's not going to trust me anymore. Right. And, we're, and we're both going to lose out. And he says, okay. And he never questioned me. But she never made it hard for me. Yeah. She never, mm-hmm. it, was, it was business. We did our job. We went back to the room. We ordered pizza. We watched some TV. I go to my room. She go, we wake up and we go, we go, we go home. That's it. <laughs> Yo, go home, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So wow. yeah, so it was, it was it was cool. It was it went fast too. It went the time. I swear, it feels like it, it just started yesterday. When yeah. you're having fun, right? Time right. Yeah. <laughs> having a ball, really having a great time. Yeah. So how did just, all that involve with you being um, like uh, an agent for other acts? Um. Like well, just... well, yeah. What happened was, you know, the acts want to make their money. Yeah. And they all knew me because they knew me from being on the road. And at that time, there was no social media. So you won as an agent if you had the connection. Now, Susie, unlike a lot of other artists, you got to realize Susie and Cover Girls, and yeah, I played a role in that, have the widest market. Yeah. I could put those acts in anywhere from New York to Miami to L.A. to Maui 
to Canada, to Mexico. Not everybody, excuse me, not everybody can do that. A yes. lot of the New York acts that I work with, there's a lot of markets, they, they cannot. They can only do like the tri-state area of New York, mm-hmm. maybe Chicago. And if you've seen them in Chicago, those are usually the ones that are in New York and that's pretty much their market. They can't go any further. Mm-hmm. So I had, a, and then the thing is, so I had these connections of promoters everywhere, unlike anyone else. And I, used, I was always into computers young. So I used to do these email blasts mm-hmm. and I used to build a mailing list. I had like a mailing list of like 90,000 people oh before, before, <laughs> before emails were even that popular. Right, right. And I used to put together these flyers with all my artists and I used to send them out. Mm-hmm. And then people used to call me. I mean, forget it. I mean, I made a killing. I mean, it was, it was and you know, of course I'm the agent. Yeah. Everybody wanted to be my friend. All the artists, I mean, <laughs> really, I was bringing in their money. You know, well, yeah, so, right, yeah. Keeping and it helped going. me really establish relationships. Like right now, there's not one artist really that I haven't worked with. If they're an mm-hmm. A-list artist, I've we've made hundreds of thousands of dollars together. You know, That's so it's yeah. So so we've 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 it's worked. But then when social media kicked in, right? I said, okay, this is kind of cool because now I'm already up on it. <laughs> I already know how to run ads. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna. But something happened that kind of affected my business. Now, since uh-huh. artists were online, they were accessible when they weren't at, at one point, they weren't. Yeah. And promoters yeah. now, when promoters want to book an act, what do they do? They go to Facebook. Yeah. They, they just, okay, where's Cora? Cora here? Okay. Yeah. George? Okay, let's go. Jo- How about Judy? And they'll <laughs> go and they'll find them. And then all they do is send a message. And then that promote, that artist, they save a commission if they don't go through me. So yeah. it, at this point, it makes Cut no the middle sense. Man, for the, right? Yeah, they, they, they're like the travel agent. When was the last time you used the travel agent? Mm. <laughs> Very true. Good point. You know what I'm saying? But you see, I was on to this a long time ago. So I was already setting myself up. I said, okay, it's going to come to a point where the, art, the promoters are no longer going to... You see, the promoter, I remember asking the promoter, I said, promoters don't have to pay me. Artists pay me. I remember mm-hmm. asking one promoter in Miami, I said, why do you always call the artist direct? I said, why don't you call me? You get a partner on board. It doesn't cost you a penny. I handle yeah. all the paperwork. I handle the flat. I do everything for you. And he said, oh, I like to fraternize with the artist. That's what he told me. Oh, mm. I said, oh, so I got it. And, and at that point, I realized that he wasn't the only one. He was yeah. just the one that told me. Oh, right. Everyone <laughs> just wants to be, they love to, they want to be friends with the, with the artist. With I was like, artist. well, that doesn't stop you from being friends, you know? So, right. But, you know, but yeah, so, you know, and even now, so I still booked a lot, quite a bit. Like now, I mean, my calendar's full. So we, we still book a lot, but it's, I, I still got to watch it yeah. because it, it's not going to be what it used to be. It will never be that again. That's over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? So, and, and that's fine. I'm not crying because I'm a big fan of technology. I'm a big fan of technology. Yeah. So, so realize you got to grab something, you get something extra, you have to give something up. And what I got to give up is that exclusivity. There's no, now it's not, I know everybody. No, everybody knows everybody. Knows everybody. (laughs) Right. You know, you want Stevie B, send him a message. Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. You don't have to call me. It's it's true. That's true. But then that gave you also an opportunity to be on social media. So we were checking you out. You're on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and you also have two podcasts, right? Well, I have one podcast. I have the Good Night Freestyle podcast, and I have that one that me and Angel are. We bought that one's going to be a video podcast. We have all the equipment here, mm-hmm. and we're trying to start that in the fall. It's called Where Freestyle Lives. Okay. So, oh, nice. so yeah. what's the one that's on you? I, I caught one with you guys. It's just like audio. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about stereo. Yeah, so, stereo. Yeah. <laughs> so, so stereo uh, was an was a, is a, is a is a like a podcast. If you if you listen to it, you see how it works. Uh-huh. It was cool, but there was a lot of glitches, and you oh. can hear it like oh. when we were doing it. Like they were cool because what would happen was Angel would go in one room, I would go in the office, <laughs> all right? And we would do just like you guys are doing, and we would start, and then people could come on. But people can't, it's no interview. Like, they can leave a message, and then you can play the message, so they can, it was cool. And then you had the little cartoon head. Yeah, yeah. You know, but the, the glitches were getting annoying because you kind of lose track of where you were, and I was like, ah. Uh. So, but it was cool. We did about 10, 11 episodes. Mm-hmm. So, and that's cool because I saved that, download them, I put them on my YouTube. Now they're inventory. And that's why I do all this stuff. I build inventory. 
Yeah. I want I want I want people like something happens to me or whatever. I want people to know about me. I want people to know what I do, what I've done. And if there yeah. maybe there's something in that what I've done that can help someone, then that's 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 a great thing. Yeah, because I, I what I what I the one that I like is that so you are also on you on the YouTube you have um Know, which explores the voice, sound, and cultural freestyle, right? Right, right. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, it's a great source of information. Like, like I've always, I always said I was in the wrong business. I always loved music, and yeah, like, yeah. I should have written for like you know back then. Remember, like Vibe magazine and all that. I was like, I should write. Yeah. I should have wrote for like a, a magazine. Yeah, but you, but do something. you see? But you see, the opportunity is even greater now. Yeah, it is. It, it is. really is, and we're not too yeah. old for it because you know it's it's like. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's a great opportunity right now. So no, yeah. no, we, yeah, but but your competition is higher. Right, right. That's the thing. Yes. Yeah. But so what? So what? Yeah. So now you can go and it's all free. You know. Yeah. Hey, you but if you're excited. awesome, you're awesome though. <laughs> you know what it would have cost you guys to do a podcast like this back in the days? No. Of course, it would cost you a ton of money. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Now everything's free. It's accessible. Yeah. Yeah, just gotta. Hug. Yeah. I love it. I'm I'm a huge fan. I try. I get on almost every platform. Like I'm everywhere. I know. Yeah, <laughs> and I, it's, I, I, I don't do it. Channel. If you notice, I don't grab a lot of followers. Like I got a few, but that's not what I'm doing. See, I I love the different mediums, mm-hmm. and I love to explore them. I like to see what they do, and I I and I I get different people that reach out to me. See, yeah. if you just go on Facebook, right? So Facebook and Instagram, a lot of times they're Pretty similar, but then, but they're also different because mm-hmm. Instagram, you get a younger crowd. Right. Facebook, mm-hmm. not so much. So, so, you know, so sometimes people will take, you know, one thing that they're doing and put them on all these different platforms. Um, that's okay. I do that too sometimes. But to, you know, engage with that particular platform, it's a whole other audience. Yeah. You know, you know you'll see your, 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 your fans on Instagram are different. You have a few from Facebook, but they're different. They're all different, yeah. yeah. The, you know? the age group, like you say, mm-hmm. their style, what they're yeah. into. Yeah, and and and, and how they different. and right and they're and how they organically like to interact. They mm-hmm. like to in, like people who are on Twitter. People on Twitter because they don't want to sit there and write a story. Right. They want to they want to tell you their <laughs> nice business and short. In, yeah, in eight lines and that's it. You know, three lines, <laughs> whatever. So yeah, so yeah, so that's their native way of of engaging for that particular platform. So I, I love yeah. it. I, I, yeah. I, think, I think I'm glad I, I, I ended up in, you know, during this time. I, I almost didn't make it though. Yeah. <laughs> you almost didn't make it. No, you yeah, but you're doing a great job. So Thank I was you. looking at you. You, the, the voice, sound, and culture of freestyle. Mm-hmm. And um, like I was saying, it's like a great source of information and, it, and the mm-hmm. videos, uh, you give like tips, uh, like breaking into the biz, mentoring. Right. Um, right. And the one that I really liked, it was we. You had a post on Instagram that I responded to. It was like a long post too, but it kind of <laughs> fell. It, yeah, it kind of fell. <laughs> it was like all passionate about it because I always feel this way. And you talk about you know the breaking down components of a freestyle song. Yeah. Okay. The three. Yeah. The three steps. Uh-huh. The three steps. And I'm um, cracking up because it's like this is where I find it hard to embrace a lot of the new music being produced because not that it all should all have like that right. that type of those beats in a song but i think it's just because i've i'm from that era yeah and it just feels more i don't know it just feels more authentic and, to me but that's everything and that's how your yeah. parents, that's how your parents felt about their music right right our music was crap uh, my kids don't want to listen to anything freestyle yet. Freestyle <laughs> has clothed them their entire lives, yes. has fed their bellies. <laughs> yeah. every, every ounce of whatever they've owned since they were born was purchased with freestyle, freestyle. money. <laughs> but as far as they're concerned, yeah, yeah, that's, that stuff's corny. Yeah, it's corny. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who cares yeah. about love, 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 right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, with all that, I mean, like, how do you, wh- how do you feel about like this new breed of artists that are out now? I, I love it. You know, I, I like the new breed. I'm like, I, you know, Pete, it's funny because Angel comes into my office, right? Mm-hmm. So I spend a lot, my office is my garage. Okay. It's 400 square feet. It's all me. And I, I live in there. I'm in there by 630 in the morning. I probably don't get out till about 1130 at night. Okay. I come out, I eat, I always eat with the, with the family. Um, I come out, take a break for a minute, but I'm always in there. 
you know, mm-hmm. and then sometimes she'll come in, she'll sit down, we'll talk or whatever, right? And um, so, but when a lot of times when I'm writing, like people say, yo, you write these 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 books for, about freestyle. They said, do you listen to music? Because that's a big thing. A lot of authors listen to music. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, all the time. They say, you listen to freestyle? I said, nah. They say, you're writing books about freestyle, but you're not <laughs> listening to freestyle. I said, I can't because I can't write and listen to words singing. I need instrumentals. Mental. Oh. Right, so because I, if if I'm writing a word, if I'm writing a like, if I'm into a dialogue, and I hear a freaking Dream Boy, Dream Girl, I'm gonna look <laughs> at my paper. It's gonna say Dream Boy, Dream Girl somewhere in there. So I can't do. So I can't do that. So and then I can't really do the music. So what I listen to when I'm writing, I listen to drum and bass. Okay. I listen to trip hop. I listen to lo-fi. Oh. I listen to alternative instrumentals. That's the stuff that I love to listen to. And oh, I have cool. that stuff. And I have a blast in. So Sometimes Angel comes in. She goes, what? You're like a teenage girl. <laughs> she goes, she goes I, you know, the stuff, that, the stuff that you're into. Like, you know, sometimes I'm in the car. And my granddaughter's in the backseat. And she's playing something. And I'm singing along with it. And she's like, I can't believe you know that song. I say, yeah, well. I know it. You're diversified. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a fan of, I'm, listen, I'm a fan of the arts in general. And I tell people all the yeah. time, um, you know, the new artists, especially a lot of new artists that contact me. I'm not talking about new artists who in freestyle that are already 40, 50 years old, right? right. I'm talking about new artists who are in their teens and they're looking for that opening. A lot of times I try to tell them, look at this area. This area is very accessible and you can't sleep on it because I've made a living on it for a very long time. And mm-hmm. so have a lot of other people. And even till this day, we got major freestyle events happening all over the country. I know. I mean, the one that we're doing July 2nd in L.A. is, mm-hmm. they got to have about 15,000 people. Oh, my God. Everybody. Yeah, we do those all the time. We do those yeah. all the time. Well, Chicago has them like every month. Yeah, I used to. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I do. Um, I do. Uh, what you call it? Um. The hall. Uh, what's it called? The hall? Uh, Concord? Sh- Concord Hall. Concord. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've done that. Worked with Nick when Nick was there. I worked with Kelly. Mm-hmm. I worked okay. with all the people. Watcher. I used to do Watcher. I used to work oh, with, yeah. Magic, with Magic Wand when he when we did the race trap in Hawthorne back in the day. Wow, yeah. Chicago nice. was my second home. I was always in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. question about the concerts. So you mentioned, you know, they're happening all the time, but it's usually the artists from like the originals, right? Like the back in the day, that's what the community... Yeah, well, um, promoters want it. Listen, yeah. promoters are not trying to help. This is the deal. Let's be real. Yeah, yeah. Promoters are not in the, in the business of helping you promote your record. The promoters are in the business of selling tickets. Yeah. And they, so they want... And I get it too. Sometimes when the promoter books later, they'll call me. Let's say they call me for George Lamont. I, they'll say, okay, George Lamont. Okay, okay, cool. I got him. Do the kind of go live. Do me a favor. Put on the contract, please. No new music, only the hits. Oh, and some yeah. promoters make me put this in the contract, and I have to go because sometimes the artists want to go and they want to sing, you know, some new music. And the promoters are like, "Yo, we don't have the stage time. We pay by the minute. And if you go over those big concerts, go yeah. over their time. It's like three thousand dollars a minute." A minute. That's the fine. Yeah, Yeah. so that's why they will they will literally pull your plug. I've seen it. They did that to Stevie one time. They pulled the plug on him. Yeah, because he was going over. Yeah. No, I was was just trying to tell you is that that's why the promoters. Yeah, that's why they go with the with the classic original acts. Mm. I was watching one of your videos though, where you're saying, you know, how is the freestyle music gonna come back, and how we need people to make more music, like new music, and they, you know, say that it's freestyle music. Is that how the rap people Mm. are doing it too? They're creating new beats, new style, and then they're naming it. This is the new rap, right? Yeah. So, what do you think is gonna take for the for for freestyle? You think maybe the the or you know the Original people, the creators, maybe need to get together no. and then come up with the new music. Nope. 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 Mm. nope. So. nope. I bust a lot of bubbles. I've got <laughs> a lot of people pissed off. <laughs> Listen, I tell the artists like the, the classics. I right? yeah. Susie is the Angels, the you know, Cover Girl, the Joy. Oh, I said, man, make the music that you enjoy. Now you already got yeah. the hits. Make yeah. the music that you enjoy. Continue to make music. Have a good old time. But if you're trying to put out a hit, if you're trying to chase the market, if you're trying to 
you know, if you're still looking for that 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 mega hit, mm. you're gonna be really batting a million because the the world of music has changed dramatically. It's not what we remember it to be. The way these artists are breaking ground is right now is on YouTube. They're breaking ground on YouTube. They're breaking ground on Spotify. Yeah. Um, they're putting records out for free. See all these artists out there yes. trying to charge yeah. $10 for a record? I'm totally against that. If mm-hmm. I spent 100000 <laughs> to do a new record for Angel, I would give that record away for free. I would give it away totally for free. I tell people this all the time. Mm-hmm. Keep doing Now, what we do need is we need, we don't need the old heads because no matter what, when the old heads come in, and that's producers, including any, any of the creators, the producers, the writers, the artists, if they come in and they touch any of that music, no matter what, it's going to be dated. It's going to have that 1987 sound. Right. Okay. And because it has that 1987 sound, it's always going to be looked at like that. Now, if you if you saw that video uh, that I did, you'll see that I I referenced that uh, Nelly Furtado record, Mm -hmm. right? Did you see that when I mentioned that? So Nelly Furtado, I forgot the name of the record, but she put a record out that listen to that record. It's a freestyle record. But she doesn't call it that. I'm but she don't you, call it freestyle. It's not, yeah, yeah. It's not you freestyle. You find that a lot. Like. Yeah. It's not freestyle like. It's literally a freestyle record. It has all the makings and the feel, but it's very modernized. Yeah. And and ha- if she would have t- called that a freestyle record, do you know she would have had the ability to really re- you know blow some bring brand new back. yeah bring some brand yeah. new life into this genre yeah because now all of a sudden it's cool again. Right. Yeah. It would have been cool again. It would have been cool again. Yeah. So, yeah. So, new artists. We need new artists, new producers, new writers. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody listening. Yeah. <laughs> we need you. We need you. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, we have, you know, there's a lot of people that came out of Chicago, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and, and like, uh, you know, shout out to my boy Jesse B. Yep, um, I know Jesse. Yeah. He, um, you know, we grew up from the same neighborhood. You know, I've known him yep. all my life. And, um, you know, he's doing great things. And, you know, I mean, he he's come from another group. Now he's doing his thing. Yep. But, you know, he, he had one uh, a current hit and it's really, you know, it feels real dance, but it has that but it has that old school vibe in it. But it's yeah. new. It's like a new, fresh feeling, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. He's working with Dee Marie, I believe. Right. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So and I've spoken to Dee Marie and we've we've spoken about that, you know, and mm-hmm. and, you know, I'm always giving her props. I'm always telling her, giving her, you know, a heads up and saying, yo, man, keep pushing, keep doing, you know, what you're doing. You know, that's all we can really do. You right. know, mm-hmm. you know, there's not much there's not even much I can do. Like everybody just has to do their thing. You know, <laughs> I'm one that everyone can reach out to and they have no strings yeah. attached. Right. They call me and say, hey. You know, and all I can give you is my experiences. I'm not going to claim to be an expert or I can say, well, you know what? I did this before and this is how I did it. And this is how it turned out. So it should it should be fine. It should work. This should work. Keep it going, you know, and I'll try mm-hmm. to encourage, you know. So I, I do that. And, I, you know, but um, but, yeah, you know, it's 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 one hell of a battle. But you see what happens, what what we run into if we're trying to really, really grab the market, you know. Mm-hmm. is the, the the fans of music, the people that buy, the people who really go to concerts. I'm talking about these old school concerts. These are old school heads that want to go. They don't want to go to a new school concert. They won't even go. Yeah. Okay. So, so you have these, um, these, uh, a lot of these new school, so-called new school artists that are going out there and they're trying to break ground. What they got to realize is that, their market, the people that they're selling their stuff to really is the old school market, is the old school oh. fans mm-hmm. who only like what's already come out. Right. To them, nothing is ever going to top that. And if you're going to go after the kids, I'm going to be real. It's really hard to get kids to like someone who's older than them. See, kids, mm-hmm. kid, w- the reason why the cover girls and all these groups did well back in the days is because the fans were more or less their age. Yeah. Angel, was, Angel was like 17, 18 years old. So were all the fans. Right. The, the young boys back there would love to have a pitch, a post of the cover girls on their wall. That's not going to yeah. happen these days. These, no, no, no. These teenage girls, listen, my granddaughter cannot have Johnny O's post on her wall. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. You know? So, you know, and, you know, and that's what it is. You know, so that's why, 
the, the record industry, they've always geared towards the kids. Yeah. They've always, and that, that will help the genre. If we start going in that market and I have a whole, I have a vlog that I did a video on that as well, mm -hmm. where I tell people, you know, look at the kids, you know, bring, yeah. the, bring the kids in, you know, yeah. because the kids will bring in a younger audience. Right. But then you get those young kids because I have, I've seen some people that they'll have their kids come on and then they want to be a part of it. They want to sing background. I'm like, no, 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 no. No, gotta, no. <laughs> no yeah. so you need to step away. You need to, <laughs> yeah, leave them alone. Let them do their thing. And, and don't go and get the old school producers to do their record. You can't. See, they're doing it wrong. Right. They really That's are. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I have, uh, you're talking about, I, I have a funny story. Um, uh, so it was like uh, one one of my most memorable times was growing up. My parents take me to um, Navy Pier in downtown Chicago. Yeah, uh, this had to be I don't know eighty eight or so. This is before Navy Pier was like Navy Pier. Okay. They used to throw like grad night parties there and DJs, and they would have performances. You know, wow, wow. And um, so we go, you know, because. I Remember my one of my first cassettes. It probably was a bootleg cassette, but I had it. Yeah, it yeah. was uh, the Cover Girls cassette, you know. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, they were coming to perform at Navy Pier. Uh, and I don't know if any if, if, if you are listening there, you know, uh, with reference to Angel uh, a lot, mm -hmm. and that's Latif's, uh, that's married to Angel from the Cover Girls. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we go to Navy Pier, and um, I'm so excited, right? Me and my they take me and my friends because the Cover Girls are performing. Right. So we're standing right in front of the stage and here they come. And there's Angel right in the center, all cute and stuff, right? And they're singing. <laughs> and I just remember just singing my ass off. And I'm, cause I knew all the, you know, I knew all the words yeah, and yeah, everything, yeah. you know? And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, I remember her just, I mean, we're, I mean, I'm not sure of her age, but I mean, I mean, I'm not that young. So uh -huh. we're sitting there and I just remember her stopping and looking at me like she just had this big smile. You know, wow. I could imagine how they feel Aww. like everybody knows our music and, yeah. you know, yeah. And I was just like, oh, like she saw me sing her <laughs> She yeah, yeah. sees me like I know her music, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, was, um... She's still the same way. Yeah. She'll look right at you and she'll, she'll get a kick out of that. She yeah. loves that. She, yeah, she she's... has like, she smiles with her eyes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah and they're green. They're green, so that helps. <laughs> yeah, and I know. And that was another thing. I have green eyes as well. So I was just like, oh, you know, we, we got yeah. the same color eyes. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. But yeah, I always, you know, they, they were always my uh, favorite female group freestyle growing up. And yeah. it was just real cool to just, I, I always remember that. I'll always reference that while, you know, wow. I was there in the beginning and I wow. would always see them, you know, everywhere. Do you know, I've never, I had never had the opportunity to see the cover girls at any time during the heyday ever. Oh, that's right. Right. Yeah. yeah so 80, 88, when they were at the top of the world, I was at the bottom of the barrel because that's why I did the most of my bid was during 88. That's when they oh. shipped me upstate. So it was crazy because the first time I saw the cover girls were, again, was from the day room. Oh, okay. I in the day room and watching, uh, I think VH1 or the box, I forgot. And, uh, yeah. and that's the first time I saw the cover girls, you know? So it was just very weird. <laughs> whenever, I, whenever I think about that, you know, she was at the top of the world. I was in the bottom of a barrel. And somehow, some way, we met. We met in the middle. Yeah. You well, know? Hey, and, yeah. And it, it, you, look like you, you look like you have a wonderful relationship because, you know, I'm on Facebook and... You guys yeah. crack me up on your TikTok. She looks at you like you're nuts. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, oh, they're just too cute. How long have you guys been married now? Uh, we're, well, we're together. We're going to be together 20 years next year. Wow. And then oh, congratulations. we're married. Thank you. We're married uh, 16 years. 16 years. 16. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we moved, well, we moved. We live in North Carolina. So we got married oh. when, we moved, when we moved out here. Uh -huh. nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. have two kids, grandkids. Or... I, yeah, I have a daughter. She's in in the army. She's in Germany. Oh. And then nice. I have a I have a son. He's thirty years old. He's okay. uh, out doing his thing. And then we have the two oldest grandchildren because the neighborhood we live in has better schools. Okay. And I have the four because my son <laughs> has four kids. So the two oldest already in school. So we're like, listen to you guys. Figure out what you want to do, where you want to live, because they're moving around. I said, leave them here. Let them go to school here. I put them on the bus right in front of my house. And then we watch her. Like today, we had to run to the to the school because my grandson, he's six. He had a stomach a stomach virus two days oh, ago. No. And then my granddaughter, she's uh, she's nine. She got one today, and oh, they had the ERG exams. Yeah, so the school called us, and yeah, it was it was 
it was a messy scene, so we had to go <laughs> grab her. So now she, and then when, nowadays when the kids are sick, right away they have to take a COVID test. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, you they know? can't go back Same to there. school. No, they can't. So this is like their fourth COVID test. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're babies. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're, I, I was probably I was probably crying. I was like, when you said that. I'm like, I know. Oh, I'm like, shit, I don't want to tell them they're sick. <laughs> hey, speaking of, speaking, speaking of Chicago, you know, me and Angel got COVID in Chicago. Oh, New Year's, really? New Year's Eve. We did the show for Julian Jumping Perez oh, for New yeah. Year's Eve. Oh, really? It was yeah. pretty bad. I wonder how many people caught it. When you guys I don't show, know, man. but I mean, we didn't realize oh. that we caught it. You know, we got home and, and um, you know, I felt anxious. Like it wasn't like I felt a little like muscle pain on my. <laughs> but I thought maybe because I've been off the road for so long and now traveling and going through the airplane and the airport. I thought maybe just my maybe just my muscles, they're not used to moving so much. Right. So I just thought that was that's what it was. And then uh, uh, I had to go to the hospital. And check. I said, man, check my heart, check everything. Because yeah. I didn't know. They said, everything was cool. We'll give you a COVID test. And it's going to take a few days to go. And then like, that was a Thursday. Bam. Saturday, <laughs> Saturday, she, she wasn't feeling good. She goes, I think I'm going to go to the hospital later on. I said, I said, well, why don't we go now? Because we, since we come out here, we, we don't have a primary doctor. Like, we just go <laughs> to the med care or whatever, you know. Yeah. And because we never, we never go to the doctors. And so I told her, I said, I said, well, let me take you now. Let's not wait till later. So we go, we take her. I have to sit out in the car. And she's in there a little longer than I am. And all of a sudden, she's texting me. She goes, uh, you came up positive for COVID. I'm oh, like, great. Oh, yeah, so she, she had them uh, pull my results. She pulled my results. And uh, and then they got her suspected. Now, she got it worse than I was because she got mm -hmm. sick. And oh, um, they found it in her lungs. They saw bubbles and stuff. Oh, and, no. That's scary. Mm -hmm. I was scared because I'm like, yo, like, I'm, I gained quite a bit of weight these last few years. And <laughs> I need to breathe. Like, yeah, breathing yeah. is very important for me. <laughs> of course. <right? laughs> you know? I think so, I yeah, need it. Yeah. yeah. So it, I was terrified. It scared me. Oh, I was worried man. about... And I told when we got that call and Julian called me, go, please, I need you guys to come. I said, all right. He goes, I promise no meet and greet. No. Yeah. So we did. We did everything. We were extremely, extremely careful. And yeah. no matter what, came back, we got it. And it had oh. to be in the airport. I don't think it was at the show. It had to be the airport. At the airport. Yeah. Oh, damn, yeah. Chicago. Oh, I so know. They're doing know better guys, now. <laughs> I know. So you guys are touring now and everything. Are, do yeah, you have any plans to come here? Yeah, well, we're doing private shows September 18th, mm -hmm. but I know we're gonna get more between uh be um between now and then. I'm sure we we got a lot of Texas, California, Florida. Yeah. Like we're like it's almost like the Roaring Twenties. We went from zero, <laughs> like to all of a sudden, like my calendar is like I'm almost full for like half the year. Yeah, like, like the amount of shows that we have right now, I could take that for the rest of the year. We're good. Yeah. Of course, we want more. We want we got a lot of catching up to do. But um, but yeah, it went from like zero to a hundred. It was like, Damn. oh man. So yeah. who's part of the tour? Who's part of the same groups going to? No, nah, we go. We got different ones because like I, when I do the one July second, mm -hmm. that's uh, of course, Cover Girl Stevie. It's just big tour. Right. Lisa, like all the Shannon, all the big names. Okay, mm, okay. that's the one that we're doing on August twenty seventh, twenty eighth in L A. Uh, that's Angel. I think somebody else. I forgot who they didn't put them on the banner yet. Then we're doing um, a, a Texas tour at the end of this month. We're doing Austin, San Antonio, then Dallas. So we're doing three nights, uh, one after the other. Um, and that's like with Frankie J. So we have Frankie J on that one. Oh, we have, okay. Yeah. Um, Angel, uh, shoot, I think Niasia. Like it's a smaller crowd. Oh, okay. A smaller lineup. Yeah. Mm hmm. Nice. So, yeah, and then we're doing Mirror Mall in Florida. That's going to be a big lineup. I was the agent on that. So I already booked Stevie, Shannon, Cover Girls, and we're going to add some more to that. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, so they fluctuate. So sometimes we'll do a so See, that's the thing with Angel. Angel loves to perform. Yeah. But not everybody can accommodate the Cover Girls. It's expensive. It's expensive. And, 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 and you have to accommodate everyone. So when we do a smaller venue, I, you know, I tell Angel, I so said, what do you want to do? You want to pass? He goes, hell no. Like, she just loves to perform. It's not even awesome. the money. Yeah, so we have a different scale where we do the Angel OCG, which is the solo, her solo work. Yeah. Okay. And we go and we do those. I, I enjoy doing those. We, we both do, because we kind of, it's a little more 
relaxed. Yeah. Nice. I'm going to have to catch you when you come to Chicago so I can stand in front and I can sing along like I did Absolutely. back in 88. And take me with you. <laughs> take me with you. Where, where are you at? Where, you're both in Chicago? Yeah, yes. we're near Chicago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Everything is there. So where can we find the schedule? Like, or if people, you know, that are listening want to look at the schedule, so um, where you're going to be performing, where you have shows? I mean, usually the people that know follow us on social, so we post the flyers right on our social media. Uh, media um we don't do it i don't do a calendar uh mm-hmm. because the calendar sometimes changes and it was really hard to just maintain now we do like an alan beck like a freestyle explosion tour mm-hmm. sometimes they'll come to me like 15 16 dates then i'll put that on a public calendar because people will call me and i want to make sure everybody's covered but when we're doing these like one-offs we just post yeah. the flyers as they come up and so as soon as they come up okay. we'll put them on our pages and uh but you know i, I always encourage people to follow us on, yeah. I'm everywhere. My name, Latif Mercado. Follow me. And I, I we'll love have, to. Yeah, we'll I love have to all his platforms linked up. Please. It's a yeah. long list, yep, but yep. they will be there. Or you could just, <laughs> yes. do, you could just do the one link, my, uh, Your my link, link tree. Yeah, Your my link, link tree. tree. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's cool. That. Yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> so, appreciate so, it. So Let's before see. we wrap up, right, Gato, how do we, we always want to ask some questions. Yeah, it is time for some cheese men now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> just a little bit of cheese. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, okay. So, uh, let's see. So, do you sing in the shower? If so, what songs? <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, always R&B. Oh. Nice. Yeah, I mean, come on. I'm naked. It's got to be yeah. sexy. It's got to be yeah, sexy. <laughs> Yeah. I can't right? freestyle. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You got to throw some Drew Hill in there. Is, oh, no, no, some Jodeci. How's that? Oh, Jodeci. <laughs> yes. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Those are great throwbacks. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so, I mean, you don't listen to freestyle much, right? You don't think? You know, <laughs> you got to realize how much I listen to it. Like, I'm always around it. Like, I listen I to it to a level that. So, sometimes I want to break away. It's just like, you know. You know, somebody who plays baseball, they don't want to watch it. They want to play. They want to yeah. watch football. You know, it's just right, kind of, right. it's kind of, yeah, yeah, I don't want that to be, because sometimes, you know, people take as, oh, I heard you don't like freestyle. Like, Are you kidding me? Yeah. What do you mean life. I don't like it? I said, no, yeah. I just, I'm just versatile. I like to break it away. I like to, but, you know, that's like when I do my TikToks, people ask me, how come you don't do like, like the other people sing freestyle? So don't you like, rapping on there? Do one of your raps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah. so but if you could remake one freestyle song, right, by a non freestyle artist, what I song know. would it be and what artist? Wait, 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 wait. Back up, I'm trying to get that. So to what to create so free- to remake. Say we want to remake a song, oh. or maybe just maybe a, a new song, right? But but from a non freestyle artist. Oh wow. Wow. Oh wow. Hmm. Because you think about it like you like you're saying, right? Like Nelly Furtado had this track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like um, I never thought of that. See, okay, so since I since I since I like a lot of R and B, my stuff, mm-hmm. my tone, my tone is a lot slower. So you know, like any of the the R and B females, I would have liked them to do something like a, a Brenda K. Star. I still believe feel oh, more of a mellow. Yeah, kinda, like you know what I'm saying. Like I can. Yeah. You know, um, the fast songs. Yeah, I could probably sit here and and, and link a whole bunch that would probably sound cool, but. Uh, it's just to try to uh, take advantage of the ranges that they have. Because you think about That's freestyle true. records, yeah. they don't have too much range. So, range. You, know, <laughs> you know, what are you going to do with, you know, you're gonna take this incredible artist that can riff to death and give them this real straight melodic. Not taking it for freestyle. That's freestyle. That's the way it's sung, you know? Right. So I would have to go with like a ballad, like a, a I Still mm. Believe, you know? Right. So. Yeah, that's a great song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so what is a useless talent that you have like <laughs> super good at towel whipping or i don't know <laughs> oh wow you you know so it's funny because you say towel whipping right so i have my two grand <laughs> i have my two grandkids oh, so i have my two grandkids here right now this is so crazy and if you ever talk to angel bring this up because she's gonna say these kids are nuts so we call it <laughs> we call it snappies that's what we call oh, it snappies. we call it and these kids love to play snappies with me and I'm good at that shit too. Like I, I go I but see I get extreme. I, I I wet the tip of the towel and everything. Dang. Right? Nice. Okay, but I stay away from the face so I don't want no eyeballs flying across the room. But they come out they come out the shower. They come out the shower they're half naked. 
The booty showing, the towels are there. <laughs> I don't know how I do it, but I get it all the time. And, and <laughs> the way the game ends, the game ends is the first one who cries. Oh boy! Oh, and it's, that's they nice. take t- they, and they take turns. So they take turns. So <laughs> 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 that's my little fun child abuse, you know. See, I get in trouble for that one. Yeah, I but mean, they I love think, it. Yeah. And then the next day, they next day they'll come in the in the office. Say, hey, Bobby, we're gonna take a shower and come out. Can we do snappies? Oh, can we? T- oh, they got yeah. it. They're asking for snappies. <laughs> yeah, they asked for it. I'm going in there, just do it. They ask, hey, can we play snappies? Yep. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's fun. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually pretty good at that. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> and then the final question. You're from New York. Mm-hmm. Yankees or Mets? Jets. Oh, the Jets. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I mean, I would all right. So then that's weird because this is the deal. I'm from the Bronx, so Bronx will always be my my thing. I hung out like crazy at Yankee Stadium, all that 160, so that whole area. That was my stomping grounds back in the mm. days. Okay. However, the only place I ever went to a ball game was Shea Stadium because I lived there. Qu- mm. qu- I walk. I was walking distance when I lived in Queens, so I used to go there. So that has a lot of memories. Yankee Stadium, I don't have too many memories. Not oh, good ones, okay. at least. You know. Yeah, but Shea stayed in. But I was always football. I was football was always my thing. Oh, okay. Football and awesome. boxing. Those are the only two sports I really that I ever really got into. That I, I I played and I also coached. And my son played and coached and played both those sports as well. You know. Awesome. Um, Fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to come cool. to a Bears game. Oh yeah. <laughs> have you yeah, been to a Bears be, game in Chicago? No, no, I have not. I have never been to any games outside of New York. The Bears oh, wow. are known for tailgating, not winning, but it's you know a lot, of, a lot of the, a lot of the states that we go to, like Dallas, like they're off the freaking chain, you know, with their games yeah. and the way like the whole world, that whole city just changes when there's a when there's a game going on. It's just it's oh, crazy, you know. Yeah, yeah, my husband, him and his damn football. I'm like, oh my god, I can't stand it sometimes. Yeah. I'm like. Over here, you don't remember we got we got the plant, the Panthers over here. I've never been to a game yet. My nephew tries to get me, but it's like my world is different now. Like yeah, I don't, yeah. all that really cool stuff. I really it's like <laughs> I can I guess I can make time for it, but yeah. I'm so excited with a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now that yeah. taking time. Like I just did a podcast about working out. I'm like guys, man, I gotta work out. Like like I feel like <laughs> if I go or even go for a walk, sometimes after this, you know, everybody's like, yo, let's go walk the neighborhood. I'm like. Uh, I'm busy. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got something to. I got something to do. I gotta finish. I gotta finish this. And uh, yeah. And um. But yeah, it's just like my world is different. Like I and and I'm trying to like people say, well, you gotta find balance. Anyone who's an entrepreneur, you're not. There's no balance. That's really that shit doesn't exist. Yeah, I heard that you before. Really, yeah, you know, it's not. It doesn't exist because you try. Like I feel guilty when I can't sit down. That's why I always make it my point to eat dinner with the kids. Yeah. And I, my, my wife, nice. and we, me and my wife, we, we, we choose um, like a series. Like, I'm not a big TV. I love movies, but mm-hmm. all is that for the weekend. But at the end of the day, what we do is we find a series that we're watching. I like like, I like, like thriller stuff. Okay. And we'll find because I only have time because I'm going to fall asleep to watch one 30 minute episode. So we'll find one. And every night after, after you know, I'm done, take a shower, go mm-hmm. chill out. We'll sit down and we'll watch that one episode. If it's really good, we might try two, but I'm going to nod <laughs> off and I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to get in trouble because I can feel her staring at me like, you're falling asleep. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sounds like my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll fight with her for an hour about what to watch and then go to fall asleep. And then fall asleep. Yep. And then I wake up and she's staring at me with this face. I'm like, just, you got me watching this shit. And you're sleeping. <laughs> and you're sleeping. <laughs> That's like me and my husband watching The Walking Dead. I'm like, really? You're gonna fall oh, asleep, man. and now I'm stuck watching this. I don't want to watch. You know this. what? I got hooked. I got hooked on that show. But then what happened was, I can't see. I learned I gotta watch. Like when it's done and there's nine seasons, that's right. when I'll start. But I can't come back next year. I can't. I'll never yeah. come back. I can't yeah. watch a season. Yeah. And come back. I gotta wait till they're all done and they're both all on Netflix. Then I'll go and uh. I'll, I'll binge on it. That's it. Yeah, I can't do it. Sorry for all you people that watch it. Just ain't for me. <laughs> well, 
Latif, it's it's been a blast. Uh, thank you so much for thank joining you. our podcast. Oh, thank you for having me. With us. It's been so much fun. Oh, it's been yeah. great meeting you, learning Same everything here. about you. Thank My you. apologies that I was I wasn't, you know. No, we uh, weren't stopping you. We were getting you on. You were. Yeah, no, but <laughs> it wasn't listen, complete. I am on board. I have to get your book. I have to learn everything about I'm learning, you know, with Nic- when Nicole hey, and are, some of our other friends. Nah, you, you, know? guys are bu- you guys are busy. You're doing your thing. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. I love to see it, you know. I just, uh, I think it's, I think it's great, you know. Oh, thank, thank you. you. you know? Thank you so, so much. All right, and I appreciate and, it. When we, when we go to Chicago, we'll definitely, you know, reach out and yes. come on down to a show and, you know, hang yeah, out Yeah, hang out. That'll be so much fun. And I promise okay. I won't sing the songs and be a big no, fan. No, no, well, no, no, you, you should. Ha- you, you have to. You have <laughs> and to. And I'll record Gotta you. Gotta tell me my story. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, but before we go, let's raise, you know, let's, let's raise a glass. You know, we have our drinks here that I haven't even Okay, I got my water. Cause, yes. Yeah, because we just, I've just been so excited with this interview and learning so much. It's been mm-hmm. so cool. Yes. Um, so let's raise a glass and here's two and one of yours, recognizing, defining, and nutrient freestyle, right? Yes. Salud. And thank and you for salud. being here. Thank you. Thank All you right, ladies. So I appreciate you. Thank you thank so much. You. Salud. Salud.